Elise, you are just such a light, first of all. you I, I know you personally, and I've met you at a conference just ever so briefly, but you were spiritual. This is my understanding before your near-death experience. You're on a deep spiritual path, so your NDE took you to uh, other levels and, and other deep understandings. But uh, Felice Martini's NDE happened in 2015 after being hit by a truck while she was crossing the road. Her higher self connected with oneness and she merged with the divine unconditional love that instantly answered her deepest questions. Felice is an intuitive channel and multidimensional guide and also works with individuals and groups who have had spiritually transformative experiences. So you help us on this path. So, so happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so honored that you asked me to participate in this, truly. Yay. Thank you. Oh, you, you have an amazing story and you're an amazing light. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reflections. Honestly, <laughs> like we are all reflections of that light in one another. It's there in all of us. So thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about who you were before, what was going on in your life before. Okay. And then a little bit about the experience and how it's changed you. Okay. Um, okay. So prior to, and I want to say today, December 2nd is eight years in human earth time, right? So December 2nd, 2015 was the, the, the shift, the change, the after, right? So prior, um, I grew up in a super loving family, a super supportive family. Um, I was going about my life. I have two kids. I, I had been on a more conscious spiritual path since my twenties, I want to say, and the accident happened when I was 49. So yeah, so the math, I'm 57. <laughs> so the accident happened. Um, so so before my NDE, um, I there was a few years. I'm going to focus on the few years before because, yes, I had been on a spiritual path. I had many out-of-the-box experiences in this kind of search for there's something more, there's something bigger, there's something greater. And I went on this search. So I had these these super, as I mentioned, out of the box experiences with um, indigenous elders and in Central America in caves with, with Mayan priests. I mean, super far living off the grid, uh, going to an ashram. I know my mom's watching. I think there was a time when my parents were ready to call the deprogrammers and they lost a lot of sleep in my antics and my going out to search outside of myself. And and life went on. And then a couple of years before I got hit by the truck, a bunch of things happened, which I call resiliency boot camp because growing up, and I'm so grateful and blessed because I realized not everyone at all has this experience of birth family being this nourishing, safe place. So when I was thrown into this resiliency boot camp, I was like, whoa, what is happening? My house had a fire. My partner had an affair. I became an empty nester. My house once gutted on the top, then had a flood on the bottom. So how to be, it was uninhabitable. Um, I moved, uh, uh, there was a theft in my house and all my jewelry got stolen. Um, I, and this was all in a period of 18 months. So all of these happen, boom, boom, boom. And then the final dope slot from the universe was getting hit by this truck. So it, just as I had gotten on my feet, um, I got hit by the truck. So that was a little bit about my before. I mean, there's more, but I, it, the show is about my near-death experience, not my before. So it all relates. Yeah. So that's that. I should I should and so let me know where you would like for me to oh, go with this. 
Yeah, you know, I just want to hear a little bit more about the loving parents. I know it's it's a strange thing to ask, but but for those of us who have neglectful or abusive parents, I do like to hear about the love that you were in and then why you think you went through this resiliency boot camp right before. Was it to make it through the near-death experience? You know, first of all, this is bringing tears to my eyes, is there was this stable base of family and integrity and warmth and closeness and this support to meet my brother and my sister also to follow our hearts, to follow our paths, right? Although I'm sure my parents did lose a lot of sleep, it's, it's, it was being heart led and, and, and they supported us with that. Um, and we all had these very, again, out of the box experiences and what's interesting is even amidst that, there was still like, there's something more, like there's something bigger than this, right? Which is, which has been a really interesting kind of um, thing to look at, right? Like here I am in this total embraced with love and there's still, you know, and there's also still something, you know, we all have trauma. We all have these stories that I'm sure my, my mom said something to me or my dad something said something to me and I made it mean something. So then I, I go about my life with these stories and these beliefs that aren't true, right? I mean, we all have that. So, and yeah, there were micro traumas. Of course, everyone has micro traumas, even in the, in the best of circumstances, there are these events that impact us and impact our wiring because we're biologically and physiologically wired and grow up in society and culture. So there's that. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, Trisha. So let's, let's go into what were you, what was going on with you right before your NDE, and then let's go there. So again, dope slaps from the universe all along the way. And what got me through all of that was knowing that if I could use all of the things that were happening in service to help others, that it would give it meaning. And that was what I held on to on the days where uh, in the resiliency boot camp where I could barely get out of bed. That's what got me out of bed, right? Was that, okay, it's, there's something more to use this for. And as I went through a lot of different uh, healing uh, modalities to really go dig deep into that dark night of the soul uh, to come through to the other side, I got to, I was distracted by the chat. I got to this place of, you know, getting back on my feet and knowing that, okay, I want to do something with this, yet I wasn't doing anything. It was either I was going to do that, like do, I was going to be in that, I was feeling called to that on this path of growth and healing, or I was going to take what I was doing. I was in Montessori education for 25 years, and I was going to take what I was doing with children and with educators and expand upon that. And I wasn't doing either one. I was kind of in this, in this place where I, I was also involved with someone um, and I was playing in this narcissistic crazy town playground. And I knew I, where I was wanting you to go. Yeah. I knew I shouldn't be engaging yet. I was engaging. Like I was just about outside of the playground, but had one toe in, right? And actually right before I got hit by the truck, I had been going back and forth with him. I left work on the way to my car. I was in this engagement and I knew, like I knew in my, in my soul, in my heart, in my every part of me, my body was like, nope, nope. And I wasn't listening right? It's like, there are things we know that we know that we know that we know, and we don't always listen. And I wasn't listening. 
And I remember I put my phone away. I was like, that's it. I'm going to go to spin class. And then I got to the light and I was distracted thinking about it. And then I proceeded to, then that's when I got hit by truck. So, yeah. And, and then what happened? In the truck, <laughs> you want to hear about the, yeah. Well, what did you experience? Yeah, when you got what hit I by the truck. Yeah, so what I experienced was, <clears throat> I look both ways, the light had turned red. And I'm, I, I know a lot of people here, I'm guessing have heard my story. So I don't know how much you want me to go into detail about this. Go into detail. No, just that. the basics, just okay. the basics. Okay, <laughs> great. So the light turned red for, for the cars to stop. It was a busy intersection. And um, the, this, a truck. So I, I was like, Oh, I could cross the street now. Like I was paying attention. I was in my thoughts, but I was still at a, you know, stopped at the corner and up from behind me came a big uh, Dodge Ram pickup truck. And it made a, she sped up because she, because there was an oncoming car and she wanted to make a left-hand turn before the car came. So she made a left-hand turn and she hit me on the right side of my body going about 30 miles an hour. Um, and that's when this experience started. I, I ended up with a lot of fractures and internal bleeding and a cracked head skull. And yeah, so I can share that experience. That's the preliminary. Okay, so now you're leaving your body. So now I'm leaving my body. So I'm up above my body and looking down at the scene. I'm a little disoriented at first because I'm existing and I'm aware yet my body is laying on the ground. So there was a little disorient disorientation and then it started to smooth out. And as I was looking, I could hear and see everything that was going on and I could feel it's it's giving words right words uh i could feel what was going on and the hysteria and the um, franticness of the the people below me and of the girl who had hit me and there was a question about being able to go in into the body and i understood that i could go back and it was just a, an instant. I knew I would be able to go back. And my body looked like it was in one piece. There was that. And it, it, there was a sensation of, of raising higher and higher and higher. And the scene below me faded. And I was in complete blackness. And it was an illuminated blackness. There was no thing. There was... I don't want to say everything because that that implies things. There was just pure expanse of this black that had a light infused in it. And it was directionless. It was expanse. It was um, all embracing. And it was also as if I merged in. So there wasn't an eye in that state. It was being as this pure blackness and in the blackness you know we give it i give it these qualities yet it was simply pure peace there was no thoughts there was no uh, wonderings which came after there was simply pure infusing into this you know i want to say loving and loving implies that I, I guess it loving implies that there's a, a an other or something it's 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 in this stage in this place it was pure calm peace serenity being expansive it's existing as the source of all creation. That's how it felt. 
And at some point there was a shift in a vibration, a shift in a frequency. And I found myself in this loving, warm, nourishing uh, blackness again, yet the quality had shifted so that I felt as if I was in a cocoon and on my periphery, I sensed, there was a sense that there were others that were floating in cocoons, yet they weren't others in the sense of what we see in our physical uh, reality as so as differences. We were made up of the, the same base uh, material. And so we were, I was floating. And when I was in that space, there was um, a, an energy packet which we would say is a thought, uh, a wondering started to emerge of where am I? What is this place? What's happening? And it wasn't a worrisome. It wasn't fear-based. It was just simply a huh. It, it was simply a wondering. And I understood that it immediately that it was like a waiting kind of place. There was a sense of it was a waiting place. And once that came, it was, well, what am I waiting for? What is the waiting for? What are we waiting for? Whatever the thought was about the waiting. And I was instantly transferred and shown and met with what I was waiting for in that state. And so the next, the next uh, frequency was this effulgent light that started to emerge from this, this more, it, it's kind of like the black, that, that frequency of the blackness is more like if you, if you see a starry night, right? It was like, there were these lights in these cocoons, like these, this presence in these cocoons. So in the wondering, I was immediately met with this light and in the light and from the light and as part of the light, there was a presence that was other than my own that was made up of the light that I was also in communion with. So we were, the light, this presence was there to show me, to guide me, to, um, I don't want to say to answer questions, but this presence was there for me to, in my understanding, right, to meet me. And and it was as if this presence that was other than my own was mer and and my and fully and this consciousness were merging into each other and there was an instant telepathic download upload of information that came at a rapid speed that i was able to understand in all senses senses that we don't even have name for beyond the clairvoyant, clairsentient, beyond the, the extrasensory awarenesses that we give names to. There was an, uh, a, an instant download of everything that my soul had experienced to that point of my soul's journey and, every, and an understanding of what was going on in my life at the time on earth. And what's important about, about that is, is I was able to see it in a multidimensional, multifaceted way, right? And before I came back, I heard I, the, there was a sense of urgency that started to build and it was time to get back. And I was eager to get back. That part of me that was existing with all of this new information was eager to get back if I was getting back to employ all that, I, that had just been transmitted and shown to me. So I know I'm going on and on. This is just part of what happened. Okay. Please go on and on. We like it. <laughs> Great. And before I came back, this, this, so this urgency built and I, and I needed to get back into the body if I was going back. And, and I heard from this presence that was other than my own yet that in communion I was merged in with also just like that sense that of of being totally merged into the expanse um yet it was a different part of my consciousness and i heard when you go back it's time to live big and i knew what that meant in all the ways that there is of a knowing and then um it's time to live big and 
just as I was coming back, I said, who are you? And I heard, I am you. I am you. And in, in that, I felt my consciousness um, coming down. It felt like I was coming down towards the body. And I could hear and see as I was coming down, the, the EMTs were over me asking questions. Yet I saw and heard my mouth moving and yet I was existing outside of it. And I could feel my, it felt like I was being squeezed into this encasing, even though at the same time, I was also existing outside of it. So I was existing out here and I was also like being squeezed into this body. And I was in the ambulance and I remember hearing the siren saying, oh, those sirens are for me. And I was up above, I could see what was happening. I could see the, this man by my head because my head was bleeding profusely and I could hear and see the EMT and they were aiming to keep me in. I don't know what they were doing and injecting and doing all sorts of things. Um, and in, it felt like, a, like, a, like an instant I was in the, uh, being taken out of the ambulance in this level three trauma center. So that's, that's what happened. And there's also two other messages. One in particular that I was shown, which is all is truly well, and the pillars of all is truly well in our earth bodies. So I can share about those two. Please do. Yeah. And did the messages come to you like a light or were they just, again, kind of just downloaded at all levels? It was, it, it was like uploaded, download, it loaded in all levels and it activated this remembering and it was, was about light. It came from the light. It, it, it was all in this effulgence of light that, that the uploads, downloads came. And it was interesting to, to be back in a body and then to move with the physical trauma, right? That the body then had to go to. And, you know, I couldn't walk. I couldn't really talk. I couldn't be around noise. I couldn't, it was a whole thing. I, I didn't know where my body began and ended and other people, there was like no uh, spatial awareness about because everything was existing as energy. Um, even though my body was going through a lot of trauma. Um, yeah, and the pillars of, of the all is truly well are, as I was shown and understood in, in many layers and levels, forgiveness, compassion, gratitude, surrender, faith, um, oh, surrender, faith, service, yeah. Why don't you speak a little bit of the limitless love that you experience yes. on the other side? So we have in our human bodies and brains and culturally it's, it's in the air that there's some kind of judgment we're going to come up against on the other side, that we're going to be judged either by an old man with a beard on the throne and a staff, or there's going to be some kind of judgment about us. And that is simply not true at all. There is this welcoming, unconditional love, and we are accepted and loved just as we are with whatever we experienced on the earth realm. The judgment really comes from our, our higher self in that state. Any judgment that comes is from us towards ourselves. And we are met with this total embrace and warmth and unconditionality, it's unconditional, this love, right? And we all, 
we all um, and 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 we all go through these. You know, part of the thing about a near-death experience is learning how we can apply these these things to life, right? Like, how does it help us live more fully? And when we can take a look at those things, because when you're in that state, you're able to see how you impacted others, right? And And rather than come face to face with that, when you're on the other side and you're reviewing your, you know, it's like, you're looking at it, you're held in unconditional love by this, um, this, this love that we are born from. We are not like things don't define us, right? This love defines us. It's who we are. It's where we come from. It flows through us and from us. And when we're in this reviewing or understanding of all that's happening and occurring on earth, being kind while we're here and loving towards others and loving towards ourselves and compassionate towards ourselves and towards others and forgiving towards ourselves and towards others, it feels to me that that is the kind of a marker by which you uh, review yourself when you're on the other side, like this loving presence. There's no, like I said, there's no person with a, on a staff on a throne on a walking stick. That's going to say you, you're bad. You're, but there's, it does, it doesn't exist. We're infused with love. It flows through us. It's why we're here as love knowing itself. It's like, what is that? Life is the lesson. Lo no, life is the school. Love is the lesson, right? And it's love as a state of being, right? It's like love is a noun, an adjective, a verb. I mean, Trisha, you're the English professor, right? Love is all these things. And really love is a state of being. And it doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. I learned a lot about boundaries um, coming back, which was interesting. How would you describe the love on the other side? Because to me, unconditional love doesn't even... Yeah. cover it so how would you describe the love that you felt on the other side compared to the greatest love you have felt on this side hmm. you know it's interesting I wrote down words because I I had a feeling you were going to ask that question so I wrote down words of it's, it's, it's there. It's not separate from us and who we are as the essence of who we are. When we shed these breathing forms and what's, what, what we are is the essence of who we are. It's, that's all we are. And there's, there's, I know to give it words and understanding. Um, so it could be really embraced is non-judgment, surrender, peace, stillness, nourishing, warmth, supportive, expansive, genderless. It simply is. And it's this, think of, feel in your heart, the most loving exchange or loving feeling that you get, whether it's with a pet, or with a person or in a place or a situation or with yourself, the most loving presence that is infused into all of you, feel how that feels and multiply it times a gazillion. And complete acceptance. Complete acceptance, complete acceptance, complete, because you understand, it's like there's an understanding of why you went through on earth what you went through and how it was for your growth and evolution. And I'm not saying, you know, this gets into something else because, I'm, you know, there's, there's that school that things don't happen to us, they happen for us. And whether you subscribe to that or not, we always have the choice to take what's happened in our lives and say, how is this for me? What can I use this for? How can I be of service with this? So yes, I hope that that was helpful. Yeah, it's, to, to me, I mean, everything's finally making sense. So for me, everything has meaning. There's no mistakes. Yeah. There's no coincidences. 
But what I want to know is, so you were involved with this narcissist before, and there was a lot of abuse going on there and a lot of mm, false beliefs about yourself that you would accept it. How, how has the NDE changed that for you? Mm. So first I want to say that when I, when I was out and I was knew I, I was going to come back, it was this, I had just gotten on my feet. And like I said, I only had a toe dipped in, not the whole foot. And it had really impacted my kids or my perception of how it impacted my kids and coming back because there was healing to do there as far as I was concerned, as far as the meaning that I gave everything, there was healing. And so that was a real draw to, to be back. And what I was shown is, number one, you can acknowledge the essence of who someone truly is and pay attention to who they're being. I also, I remember I was home from rehab. I was in rehab and then I had visiting nurses and for many months and he called. And I remember looking at the phone and seeing him called. And I heard that I am like nudge me that, that, that guy, that presence who's still with me, who continued. I mean, it was so strong when I, when I came back as well, like palpably and viscerally is all oh, right, all is truly well. And this whole expanse opened up that I recognize like we're souls in bodies playing out this humaning. And he was just doing what he was doing in his own soul's evolution. And that it was, I had a deep compassion and recognition that, oh, we, we were together, we're playing out this soul thing in whatever I needed to learn from it. And the coming back, the level of forgiveness, because on a soul level, all is perfect and all is well. And then we get into these human bodies and things happen and we're wired and we respond and, and that's what we do as humans. And so the depth of forgiveness and compassion from afar and, and boundaries was huge learning about boundaries because before this, it was seeing the, just treating everyone as their potential, whether they were accessing and being it or not, right? So I would say compassion, boundaries, acceptance, surrender, um, forgiveness as um, was just referred to, right? It's, it's yeah. Do you think, Do you think oh, I'm sorry, Trisha, you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah. Do you think sometimes that we have a, a soul plan or karma with someone? Uh, I've had great healing from regressions that sometimes we do have to connect with a narcissist to really learn to love ourselves. Like, I mean, sometimes that's a lesson, but what do you think about that? Absolutely. You were reading my mind, Trisha. That, I, that's pretty much what I was going to ask. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, they showed me, I was shown um, in the light. I say they, because it, this presence and this frequency of light that now uh, is in, in communion with it, with, with, is... I was shown that yes, we souls come together to teach each other to agreed upon um, a soul plan. And what was interesting is that, so so what was mirrored for me, it's like, it's, it, it's kind of the same thing. And I've said this before in an interview is that how was I complicit in it? Not in a blaming, shaming myself way, but what, how am I accountable? And I saw that what that mirror was for me was about my codependency, my codependency and my wanting to fix and my lack of boundaries, right? And saying to myself, oh, well, if I have boundaries, that means I'm not spiritual because everyone is love and everyone is light. And, and actually boundaries are really important if we're not safe so that we can be the, the highest expression potential of ourselves. And, and in the last few years, I have felt a total completion of that agreement. Like it took several years 
I am completely not charged or not activated with this person. I just, yes. Yeah, so the answer to your question is yes. I could see there is a soul plan in my, in what was shown to me is like, oh, thank you. And giving gratitude to that, that said narcissist for reflecting back to me what it is that I can learn and grow and evolve from. Yeah. So would you say that maybe he was your teacher? Maybe he taught you how to love yourself and develop boundaries, do you think? I would say that relationships, all relationships are our greatest teachers, including the relationship with ourself, first and foremost, our relationship with God, spirit, source, greater, infinite intelligence, whatever name you give to that nature to that God of your understanding and relationships mirror back to us what we can do to grow or, or where our, where our, where our lessons are, where we could really lean in. So I don't, I, I could see how I got caught up because there were things going on in my life at the time. And I just wanted to go to the happy place. And for a while that was the happy place, right? Um, after I had separated and gotten divorced from my kid's dad. So yeah, I, so as far as his particular lessons for me, I would say it, it was about boundaries, learning forgiveness, learning compassion, and learning about codependency. Yeah. And then what I want to say also is then because I still learn the lesson, like I knew that all, and I had all these uploads and downloads, yet I was still, there's habits, right, of a life experience. So I went through this imposter, imposter syndrome, because then my intuition would tell me something about someone else, but I wouldn't listen to it, even though I knew from having an embodied experience and knowing, right, like the spiritual path before it confirmed, this experience confirmed all of that in a knowing in every cell and particle of my being. So yes, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. big. Yeah, and do you think also, like with that codependency, it kind of sounds like we wanna to prove to ourselves that we can heal a narcissist or that we can heal even someone that, like there's this, you know, there's no one I can't love, you know, like, you know, that's, and, and here's the thing I could in a classroom, I couldn't in a relationship, a classroom mm -hmm. had boundaries, a classroom had police officers and principals, and there were boundaries to that relationship. But when you let someone completely into your life as a lover, friend, you know, confidant, it's different. You know, that, that was that part of how you learned boundaries. Um, my, my experience really is how I learned more about the boundaries. And yes, I could have boundaries in other places. I'm much better in boundaries in all areas of my life, I want to say now. Um, cool. As far the, as the relationship, you know, we have this primal brain wiring for loved and being loved, safety and feeling safe, acknowledgement, validation and approval, and abandonment and being abandoned. And being with a clinical narcissist, right? That word's thrown around a lot. Yet being with, with someone who demonstrates, it's like it, it activates and it triggers all of those four categories, right? Abandonment and being abandoned. Yet, yet I saw how I was forsaking myself and really my kids in a sense for the sake of another human being. And it just, it taught me so much. I have nothing but gratitude for it now, right? Because it, it, it all unfolds as it needs to unfold. It's like the all is well on, on, on the greater scale. Cause I know people listening can be like, well, look what's going on in the world. All is really well. And right on a human level, we have free will and choice and everything's not okay. Yet in the bigger picture and in the capital R reality, all is truly well. We are always loved. We are never separate from love. Love is who we are. Love flows through us. It's who we are here to be expressions of. 
So tell me more about after your near-death experience and just incorporating more of this knowing into your daily life. How, uh, as speakers or listeners always want to hear how you find joy, how you incorporate this into your life. So as I said, you know, Krista Gorman, who's another near-death experiencer who many people here might know, um, I know Sean and Trisha, you know Krista, is did a presentation on the hero's journey uh, based on Joseph Campbell's work. And I really got that, you know, you, I had this near-death experience and I came back and it's like integrating it, integration and being in a new way because nothing is the same. I'm a completely different person in the sense that part of me felt like it was ejected from more of who I truly am to come in and fill me. And that took a while. So the imposter syndrome came up because I was doing things that were no longer aligned with who I am now. And we're always in a state of becoming. So we outgrow certain ways of being um, and certain relationships start to fall by the side. So for me to integrate it all, it's like, I feel like I've gotten the elixir, right? It's taken eight years and I feel like I'm more integrated and sharing and um, super clear audience. So I can hear uh, things that are not audible to the human ear. And was interesting, I had some brain scans done and it showed, because it's on my right ear, and it showed some auditory processing of non-language. So that was very cool to see it, like physically. So this clear audience and this um, synesthesia that was activated. So being able to hear colors and, uh, and smells, it comes to me and, and being able to see sound frequencies and really living big, living into that, embracing all of it and showing up in authenticity with who are, and, and this is for everyone, right? Like, who am I on the inside in my inner voice, in my inner world, in my intuition, in my inner knowing, in that place inside of me? Is that aligned with how I present to the world. And when those things are aligned, we're in integrity um, with ourselves, with that divinity within us. So at the after it feels like I'm still, you know, even though I feel more integrated and more grounded and more able to give language to it, because with a traumatic brain injury, language was really hard to find for a while. And then you put a near-death experience on top of it, which is really hard to get words to to begin with. Um, I don't know, I'm rambling on with the question, but there's so many after effects and being able to, um, anyway, go ahead. I, I hear you wanna say something. No, you're doing great. But I, what I'd like to, uh, there's some questions about boundaries. And since you learned some boundaries, what, uh, uh, what part does the love you experienced on the other side mm -hmm. and, and loving yourself mm -hmm. have to do with the boundaries? Because people would like to know more about boundaries. So, and again, this is, you know, sometimes I feel like, again, this imposterism, imposter syndrome, because even though I've had this experience and I know in um a capital K knowing, like it's not a belief anymore. It's a, it's an actual experience. I don't, I'm still moving through it. Right. I mean, I'm human. So I would say that when you can feel into everything is love, love is that invisible, uh, net that holds the universe, that holds us, and love is the invisible thread that connects us all, is in our humaning, when we are not safe physically, psychologically, emotionally, energetically, 
you know, even epigenetics, genetics, which that's a whole nother conversation is we get to have boundaries in our human forms when something's not safe, because we're in the both end. We are both souls, spiritual beings having a temporary human experience and human beings having a human experience. And as a human being, having a human experience, boundaries are warranted. So you can have boundaries that protect you and align you more with your yes inside of you so that you feel more courageous. And again, this is tricky because I've done a lot of training. You know, I came back with all of this stuff. So I've done a lot of training to be able to guide people and support people as they go through these processes because we are wired and we do have a primal brain that responds. So if we feel a threat, we might not want to have a boundary because it's going to mean that someone's going to abandon us or we're going to feel or something's going to happen. And that's a made up story, yet it's based on something we experience in our life. Yeah, you know, so you just brought up something kind of interesting when you brought up the word threat. How do you see threats now versus before your NDE? Because many of us, that's one of the after effects is that we're, we don't, we, we're a little more, I, I hate to use the word like kind of naive because we know we've, we can't, our bodies can be mangled, but, but we will exist. And, and so many of us, we, we don't perceive threats mm -hmm. the, the way that we did before. Would you say that? Like what? I would say what's interesting and, and what Trisha, you brought up at the beginning is I would say that my near-death experience actually taught me more about being embodied as a human being. And, you know, aside from the fact, if you subscribe to astrology, I mean, I have five planets in Aquarius, I'm like all air, right? So the being grounded in a body, noticing your body always gives you these clues, like what a gift it is, how amazing that we are in this body expressed as souls, as this eternal love coming through this, this body and this form. So it's really fun to, well, that's another thing, but I like to go into the supermarket or wherever I am and look at a person as if they're, they're their inner child because that, they're connected to that place of innocence and love. So my, I would say as far as threats, paying attention to your body because your body will sh show you clues about when there is something that is truly a danger to your physical, emotional, energetic, uh, psychological well-being. Uh, pay attention. And, and that's a really big thing that you're, you're bringing up because many of us near-death experiencers are almost never in our body. So that's right. great that you're reminding, like, get back in your body. <laughs> I just have to laugh because I walk around like I am the most absent-minded professor. Like, it is hard for me to embody sometimes. <laughs> so totally. I Totally. I mean, I've practiced and practiced being embodied, like being grounded, especially fracturing my pelvis and my sacrum. I'm like, Woo! All like I'm out. And this is the happy place, right? I say this because I was shown a lot about the chakras. We're so focused on our seven uh, main chakras, but there are many chakras that exist above us, if you could see that. So there's a whole thing about accessing. So for me, it's like right earthing, putting our feet on the earth, meditating is I mean, and, and meditating using voice and sound, like really getting in our bodies. I totally relate to that. And it's been a game changer to learn how to embody. It's a fun adventure. Yes. It's it, funny. I, when I did, Trisha, with your NDE summit, one of the speakers talked about that grounding. And it was the first time in my whole life I realized I'm never in my body. Like literally it was, so it's huge what you brought up that I think many experiencers don't even realize. 
Trisha, so, you want to say something? Yeah, there's some questions that are open okay. from attendees. And, you know, one's kind of basic and who or what do you trust in now? And my guess would be, you know, that limitless love, God, but I'm, I'm curious your answer. I trust in the infinite power of love, truly. And that love is, it's like the way of light is the way of love. And that's what I trust in. I trust in that we are all reflections and a mirror of others. And that when we, uh, we have this quantum effect, we really do like, like kind acts towards others have a huge ripple effect. Like you can see, and there are many near death experiencers that will share stories about being able to see how that one kind act set off like this whole domino ripple effect. It's just it's, um, yeah, so I would say I really firmly believe in the, the power and the potency of love. And I, I have to second that. And there's a question from Dave in Florida too. Uh, and, and I second this by saying lately, some people have been kind to people in opposing parties and opposing belief systems, like really demonstrating that kindness. And his question is, can you expand upon boundaries? I find it challenging to be my better self in our current society. I would love to hear how all speakers and hosts navigate being their light-filled souls among all our worldly politics, egos, competitions, desires, violations. I mean, it's jarring when someone judges yes. me by my body, you know, or by my, it's like, Ugh, I'm not in it. What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you talking about this? So, you know, how do you navigate, navigate it? <laughs> I will ask myself, if I'm respond, I will notice again when I'm triggered, like in my body, what is my body doing? Paying attention, breathing into it, allowing it because you can't, there's no spiritual bypassing. There's no tox the toxic positivity. Like it is what it is. We feel what we feel. We can't say like, oh, well, all is truly well. So I shouldn't be feeling this, right? It's like, no, acknowledge what we're feeling. Acknowledge the trigger, waiting to respond getting out in nature, taking a walk, whatever you can do, breath practices that bring us, there are specific breath practices that could bring us into a state of coherence and calm and activate the parasympathetic nervous system and deactivate our, react, re, our activation, our reactivity. And I'll ask myself, is this coming from my nervous system? Or is this coming from the voice of my soul? So if I'm going to engage in a conversation about any of it or respond, is, is this coming from my, is this the voice of my nervous system or is this the voice of my soul? And the voice of your soul is always love. It's, it's, it's who we are. And And paying attention to what we consume, right? We want to be aware and pay attention to what's going on in the world. And we don't need to have the news on 24 seven. We don't, and, and be aware of your sources of news, right? And, and everyone has a role, right? Everyone has a role in the ways that we stand for love. And, and speaking of roles, uh, did, did you see, in your NDE, did you get to step out of your role and step out of the story? Because that's what I think that we could help with Dave's question is to understand that so many of these things that are that he put in here, it's a story. Mm -hmm. And we can choose to attach to the story or not. And that's another one of the many blessings with NDEs is that we get to actually see it's all a story. Mm -hmm. And it's, it seems real sometimes. CNN makes it very real, mm -hmm. appear that way. But it's our choice to attach to the story. And that's what I would, you know, Dave. And But why don't you tell us in your experience, when you exited the, the play for a while, what was that like? And how is it different for you? Can you, can you be more specific? So I, I'm not, I don't see the question. I'm not reading the question. So I'm yeah. Not so, yeah. So, so, so yeah, he, the, the, basically the question is, 
Um, it's very challenging to, to be my better self in our current society. I would love to hear um, how you navigate being your light-filled soul among all of our worldly politics, egos, competition, desires, and violations. So when I step into self-care, I, I know, Sean, you, I, you were, if you have a question, if you want to um, be more specific about what you were saying, but I want to address that. Yeah, is, yeah, address that. Ways of self-caring yourself so that you can return to your, that sense of yourself as your better self, ways of self-caring yourself so you can be from that place out of the head and into the heart. And it's a practice, it's a, it's a muscle, right? And as I said, you know, people have different ways of, of showing up in love, right? Maybe someone goes for a protest because they believe in something really strongly that's for the greater good of humanity in their understanding. But the intention, it's about intention also, intention is huge. And maybe for me, it's coming back over and over again to this light infusing itself in every cell and particle and molecule of my being so that when I walk and when I move and when I interact, that's how I'm contributing to the quantum field, right? So it's self-caring yourself back into connection with the essence of who you truly are. I hope that's helpful, Dave. I mean, there are more specifics, but that for this, three having three minutes left so yeah and it's just a loving way you answer it and that's that resonates with me fully it's like you're awesome it just um what i do with people you know on both sides of the aisle is i just i try to love them both you know if someone is like oh i hate the pronouns i'm a man and i'm like oh you are such a man you're such a man and if someone is going through a gender change i'm like i'm so glad we live in a time where you can do this where you can express who you are where you can be you know you can change into the gender that you want like i love it's not an either or it's a both and you know like we can love and we can love you know like we can love everyone and and it doesn't one isn't right or wrong can i can i add to that just one more oh. thing you just you just um ignited right it's like we're all waking up to this remembering we've been in the spiritual amnesia and there's this cracking open because if nothing changes, nothing changes, right? So what we're seeing now in the world is there has to be a different way. And compassion, having compassion, if someone is so strong and like in their beliefs and grounded, like compassion, shining compassion on a person, we are not in control of how others, if others access these, these um, higher states of being of love, gratitude, compassion, service, forgiveness, yet so we can have compassion for that really from our hearts. And it starts with, all of this starts with towards ourselves, compassion for ourselves, forgiveness for ourselves, watching out when we are talking to ourselves, not nicely, which we all do, right? I mean, I, we all do that. We're being self-judgmental or whatever it is, like looking at that and then turning it outwards towards others. Yeah, and and really encouraging people to step into the experience of others, I think, too, you know, like to be curious about other people. That was such a saving grace for me as a reader is to jump into people's lives from other cultures and other experiences and realize, like, as you said, Sean, like, we're not our story. We are one with everyone. We can be one with everyone. And that's where things begin to drop away and shift and you know there's just this I don't know how to describe it other than it's this universal connection it's beyond the earth though I mean to be honest you know it's kind of it's galactic it's it's really it is. amazing it is I know we have to wrap up and um and thank you for sharing all of that Trisha and for Sean and for everyone here and the thing is, is we don't need to have a near-death experience to attune to and tap into and to experience states of awareness and of connection and communion with the 
love with being that limitless love that near-death experiencers have. And that's part of the work that I'm doing now is guiding people into, into that. So yeah, so I'll, I'll have some information on my, on all of that. Yeah, I put, I put your websites right, thanks. in the chat. And then for all the speakers, also remember everyone, you can go into the Hawaiian Islands Facebook group and add, ask more questions for them and they will go in and answer them. And Felice, you can put your website again too in there just because there's so many questions. Oh, I, yeah, I just put it in. I'll put it in. Oh, again. good, good, good. Easy. Yeah. But yeah, thank you, Felice, for that love and that connection and that knowing. I think you really spread some healing today. This is so. Cool.